Hi guys, today I'm going to be explaining how to find the derivative of exponential functions. So first off, I'm going to break it down into a couple of common problems. So the easiest derivative to take is the function f of x is equal to e to the exponent x. And the derivative of this function is just e to the exponent x. It's the same thing. And the e we're talking about here is the mathematical constant e, which is equal to 2.71828, and it goes on and on like that, kind of like pi. So the next simple example that I'm going to show you guys is f of x is equal to a to the exponent x. And this is actually, the derivative of this is equal to a to the exponent x multiplied by ln a. And here a is just any constant, could be 1, 2, 3, 4, could be anything. So this actually makes sense when we look at our first example, because if we take our constant as e, it would be e to the exponent x multiplied by ln e, and we know that ln e is just 1. So that gives us our original e to the exponent x. So the next one that I'm going to show you guys is a little more complex. The function is e to the exponent g of x, where g of x is a more complicated part. And so the derivative of this is e to the exponent g of x multiplied by g prime of x. So I'll show you some examples later and it might make more sense. So the last kind of formula that I'm going to show you guys is f of x is equal to a to the exponent g of x. And the derivative of this function is f prime of x is equal to a to the exponent g of x multiplied by g prime of x. And then we're going to multiply this by ln of a. So I'll show you guys some examples now, and hopefully it'll make more sense. Okay, so for our first problem, we're going to take the derivative of the function f of x is equal to 4 to the exponent x. And this follows the formula that I showed you before, f of x is equal to a to the exponent x, where a equals 4. So let's just follow that same formula we did before. You can scroll back in the video and see it. So f prime of x is equal to 4 to the exponent x multiplied by ln of that constant. In this case, it's 4. So that's our final answer. It's that simple. Now this second example will have to do with the product rule. So the function that we're going to be taking a look at is f of x is equal to e to the exponent x multiplied by x cubed. So in order to take the derivative of this function, we're going to take the derivative of the first part, which is e to the exponent x. We know that the derivative of e to the exponent x is just itself. We're going to multiply this by x cubed, if you remember the product rule. And now we're going to add the derivative of the second part, x cubed, so that derivative is 3x squared. And we're going to multiply it by the first part, which is e to the exponent x. And so as you can see, the product rule still holds as you would think it would. This next example follows that third rule or pattern that I showed you at the start. So the function we're going to look at is f of x is equal to e to the exponent sine x. And the derivative of this function, f prime of x, is equal to e to the exponent sine x multiplied by the derivative of sine x, which is cosine of x. And this makes sense because the derivative of e to the exponent g of x, where g of x is some function, in this case sine of x, is equal to e to the exponent g of x, so the same thing, multiplied by the derivative of g of x. Alright, so in this last example, I'm going to show you that fourth pattern that we saw at the start. So the function that I'm going to use as an example is f of x is equal to 2 to the exponent x cubed, plus 4x. So we can think of this top part, x cubed plus 4x, as our g of x part. So we just follow the pattern once again. So we rewrite the whole function, 2 to the exponent x cubed plus 4x. Now we're going to multiply it by the derivative of that top part, so 3x squared plus 4. And now we're going to multiply it by ln of the base, so 2. And that's it. That's, we just follow the pattern, and that's how we get the answer. Alright, so that's it for today, guys. Hopefully you found this video helpful. 
but if you weren't able to fully understand it, you can check out my channel. I've been making a lot of videos on derivatives lately. And if you still don't understand it, feel free to leave a comment, and I'll try and get back to you.